Hi, and welcome to our instructional video that is designed to make you a smarter gambler. My name is Steve Borey, and I'm the author of the American Casino Guide, which is the number one best-selling book in the U.S. on the subject of casino gambling and travel, and the only book that comes with more than $1,000 in casino coupons. If you want to know more about the book, be sure to visit our website at AmericanCasinoGuide.com. And if you have an iPhone or iPad, be sure to download our free app. Just go to the App Store and search for American Casino Guide. In this video, I speak with gambling author Gene Scott about gambling and taxes. Gene is the author of numerous books on casino gambling, including The Frugal Gambler, Frugal Video Poker, and Tax Help for Gamblers. If you've ever wondered what taxes are owed when you win a large jackpot in a U.S. casino and how you can deduct your gambling losses, then this video will explain it to you. Now, here's my interview with Gene Scott. Do you have to pay taxes on everything you win in a casino? The IRS likes everything reported, every sort of gambling, in and out of casinos, whether it's bingo, lotteries, raffles, uh, whether you're playing in a casino on a cruise ship out in the ocean, whether you're in a foreign country casino, whether you're in a Native American casino in the United States. The IRS is also concerned with online gambling particularly, but much to some people's surprise, it does not matter whether the gambling online is legal or illegal. The IRS does not make any difference. They want you to report all gambling in all places in the world or in cyberspace or legal or illegal. Do you have to report your gambling action to the IRS even if you are a net loser at the end of the year? The IRS wants to know all about your gambling action. And probably one of the biggest myths is if you lose by the end of the year, you look at the whole year and say, I won sometimes, I lost sometimes, but in the long run, I'm a net loser. People think they don't have to report. This is not true because the IRS wants you to keep track of each incident of gambling, whether it's a session in a casino or one incident when you won a big lottery or whatever, and they want you to keep a record of all of those separately. So at the end of the year, you will have lots of winning sessions or winning incidents, and then you'll have lots of losing sessions or times that you lost. The IRS specifically says in the instruction manual that you cannot reduce your wins by your losses and give a net total at the end of the year. What are the IRS's record-keeping requirements? Because the IRS wants to know all of your action, the only way that you can fulfill their requirements is by keeping some sort of a gambling record. It might be a diary, for instance. I use a little booklet that's a calendar, and each day I gamble, I put down where I gambled, what I played, and whether I won or lost. Uh, the more technical people might keep one in their smartphone or on their iPad or so forth. Uh, some people have elaborate computer records. But in the, at the end of the day, if you're ever audited, the IRS wants to know all your winning days and all your losing days. And then that is how you report them on your income tax form. If you don't keep a gambling diary, can you estimate your wins and losses for the year? People who do not gamble too much might be able to get by with that if they are audited. Particularly, they could get go back to the casinos where they gambled and they could get what we call a win-loss statement from each casino. If your gambling is not extensive, sometimes the IRS will accept that in an audit. But on the whole, if you have fairly elaborate uh, uh, record or don't have fairly elaborate records, uh, the IRS is going to say those win-loss statements aren't very 
valuable if they're not backed up by a diary or some other computer record because they're notoriously inaccurate. They're incomplete. And if it's machine play that you're uh, doing, if you don't play with your player's card, then the casino doesn't can't give you a, an accurate win-loss statement because they don't know how much you won or lost. How does the IRS know what you win? The IRS doesn't know every little gambling transaction of every person that's gambling in the United States or wherever they're gambling. But there are ways that the IRS can find out and does. One is if you are a table games player, there's not as much paperwork as if you're a machine player, but there are rules and regulations that the casino has to keep paperwork when people cash in, buy in or cash in chips. Of uh, It starts at 3000 for sure from 10000 up that there's going to be paperwork, but in many casinos uh, it starts a lot earlier than that at 3000 Now, when you're a machine player, the, there's a very specific limit. If you play a machine and you get a jackpot, $1,200 or more, this is going to be generate a, a document called a W2G. You are going to get that. Uh, there's nothing you can do about it. And just as a note here, you better put that amount as part of your income. If not, you're going to get a letter so fast from the IRS and they're going to just assume that you forgot to put it on and they're going to tax you on it anyway. So you might as well put it on and save an audit. What is the process when you win a taxable amount? When you hit a jackpot of 1200 or more, the machine is going to lock up. Now, I, I can say that in some casinos, it will lock up on smaller jackpots like $1,000 that will not generate a W-2G, but starting at 1200 and above, that's going to generate a W-2G. So the machine locks up, the employee, some employee comes, and you have to show two things. You have to show your ID, and then you have to either show your Social Security card with your number, or it depends on the casino, you might just be able to give them your social security number verbally and sometimes they give you a piece of paper to write it down so that you don't have to say it verbally and maybe somebody around you would hear it. Uh, right, this presents a question in a lot of people's mind. They say, I don't want to hold, I don't want to carry my social security card. Uh, how do they know that the number I'm giving to you is correct? Well, they sometimes will have you They'll bring something called a W-9, and on that you'll write down your Social Security number. You'll sign your name, which is you're swearing that that is, under oath, you're swearing that that is your Social Security number. Then that takes the casino off the hook by having uh, uh, sending in a, a false Social Security number. And back to what happens next after they take care of all that. Uh, then they come and bring you back your money, and that's the happy time. One note here, the IRS expects you to put all your gambling wins in whether you get paperwork or not. So just because you don't get W-2Gs, all your jackpots are under that 1200 threshold, that doesn't mean that you're not supposed to count those. What if you don't want to give the casino your social security number when you win a taxable jackpot? You do not have to give the casino your social security number when you hit a $1,200 and above jackpot. However, they're going to take 28% out of that jackpot and send it to the IRS. And you may say, okay, well, that'll just be withheld. Uh, there is a problem because they don't know who that jackpot is. That 28% will just be lost to you. And a related question to this, somebody says, well, I don't like to give my ID. Why do they need my ID? Well, <laughs> why you need your ID is they will not give you a jackpot 
until they see valid ID. Uh, you can't get away with this. No way, no how. Is there more than one way to report your gambling wins and losses on your federal income tax return? We've talked about what the IRS requires as far as record keeping. Now, what happens when you go to fill out your income tax form at the end of the year? There are several different ways that you can handle your taxes. First, there's two main categories. There's recreational gamblers, and that's most of the people who gamble. And then there are professional gamblers that do it differently. But let's talk about the recreational first. The logical way and the way the IRS wants it is you would add up all your winning days and in one total and put that under on page one under other income and then you would mark it uh, gambling winnings. Then here's where it divides. If you're a person who doesn't itemize then you're kind of stuck because if you itemize you can put your losses as a miscellaneous deduction. However, if you don't have a lot of other deductions, then you're going to lose your automatic deduction. So it really puts a, a, a low-income person uh, in a bind because what's going to happen is, let's say you win a $4,000 royal on a dollar machine. You have to put that as income, but you played the rest of the year and you lost all that 4000 and a lot more, but you don't itemize, well then you can't take anything off to deduct. You're going to pay whatever bracket you're in, you're going to pay taxes on that whole $4,000. Now, if somebody has a bigger income, they have a lot of deductions, maybe they have a mortgage uh, that they uh, deduct and a lot of other taxes and so forth, they could put that $4,000 as income and then if they did have losses of 4000 or more, they can deduct 4000 Now, I know your next question is, all right, let's say you, you won 4000 that one time, but the rest of the year you lost 6000 Can you put the 6000 as a deduction? No, the IRS has a little rule here that you can't take more losses than you won. So you can take the 4000 income and 4000 deductions, but that's all you can take. But that at least saves you from paying taxes on money that you didn't actually win in the long term, that you lost in the long term. <clears throat> on the other hand, if you're a professional, and let me tell you, it's very hard to get the IRS to accept you as a professional. But if you make a lot of money gambling, you're kind of a full-time gambler and, and you're gambling a lot and at high stakes, in fact, you're making your living or a good part of your living gambling, then you file as a professional, as a business. Then you would do a Schedule C, and your wins and losses would be on the Schedule C. Now, there's the same rule even with professionals. You can't take more losses than your wins, but let's say you were a big gambler and you won 20000 and you lost 30000 uh, you can break. You could break even. You can't take the thirty thousand loss against other uh, income, but then you don't have to put that twenty thousand you won over on the page one under other income. Uh, a lot of people would like to count themselves as professional in, uh, professional gamblers, uh, but the IRS has really strict standards for this. Besides federal taxes, are there other kinds of taxes on gambling winnings? Once you have figured out how you should file on your federal return, you might think your troubles are over. No, not true, because if you are a resident of a state or played in a state that's now looking for new sources of income, they are now charging state tax, and some of them go so far as to take that tax out right when you hit the jackpot. So, for instance, we were recently playing in Indiana. We live in Nevada. We're not used to having money taken out of our jackpots. In Indiana, every time we hit a jackpot over $1,200, they took 3.4% out. 
This is a killer for many, many gamblers because some states, Indiana is one, that's where we used to live, and that's one reason why we live in Nevada now. Indiana takes all your wins, just like the federal, as income, but they don't allow you to deduct anything. And so everything you win is not pure winnings. Everybody knows that. You hit a, a $2,000 jackpot, and you, you may have lost that whole thing by the end of the day if you play long enough, or at least by the end of the week and the month. So a lot of Midwest states, and it's getting more clear across the United States, but the problem with this is, um, like if you play in Indiana, you're not going to get that tax back. It's gone. Now, Brad and I get that tax back because we're professional gamblers and there's different rules for that. So you may say, well, how do I know? Like another example is Mississippi. Somebody will say, I went to Mississippi and they took a tax out and they called it a a gambling state tax, not a state income tax. And they say, I can't even get that back. That is true. That's what happens. So every state has their own rules and they have sometimes different rules for somebody who lives in the state and is a resident and for somebody who comes in and plays in that state. It's too long and complicated. I have a whole chapter, and this is a, a time that I, I guess I should mention my book. I'm not trying just to sell books. I'm trying to give information. But in this case, I need to refer you to my book, Tax Help for Gamblers, because I have a whole chapter and then a whole list of all the 50 states and how they handle gambling taxes, and every one is a little bit different. All right, we've mentioned federal taxes. We've talked about state taxes. Now there's a new wrinkle that some cities are going to start taxing gambling wins. There's some new casinos in Ohio, and almost all the cities where these new casinos are, are going to take out taxes or at least charge tax for city taxes as well as state taxes and federal. So um, again, uh, you're going to be stuck. Uh, and I think in the future, you better check on this because I, I think all the cities and the states are so broke these days that they're looking for new sources of income. And gambling is always a good hit because that's a sin tax. If you want to learn more about me and my books, including Tax Help for Gamblers, you may go to my website, queenacomps.com. There, there's a summary of all my books and products, and also you can order them there. You might want to say, uh, well, uh, what about things that happen in the tax world and it's not in your book, it's something new. Well, then you can go to my blog and back on that queenofcomps.com, there's a link to my blog. And if there's something new on the tax front, I'll discuss it there. Don't forget that you can see more of our educational gambling videos on our YouTube channel. Just go to youtube.com slash American Casino Guide.